Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the fifth and final part of a talk on decolonizing our minds. And so the fifth myth is that everyone has benefited enormously from Western progress. Actually, today, uh, maybe seven or eight people have half the planetary wealth. And uh, more than one billion live under less than a dollar a day, which is uh, very, very poor conditions. And this is even though we have enough money to feed, clothe, house, educate and provide health care for everyone on the planet. About 700 billion is needed for this. But today the countries are, all the countries around the world are spending 2.1 trillion on wars. Uh, but not 700 billion to educate. Why? Because capitalism depends on having a lot of poor people who can do labor for cheap so that the capitalists can make lots of profits. Today, the amount of excess money spent on food, which leads to obesity, is around uh, 260 billion, and that is enough to wipe out the hunger on the planet. So, there is a massive amount of imbalance in the system, but the averages hide all of this. So now we come to the topic of our lecture that we have been taught some poisonous ideas, we have to clean them out and then uh, that's called unlearning those ideas and then we have to relearn the good ideas. And so making a criticism of the West is never enough for any meaningful progress, you have to provide an alternative. And that's what the Ghazali project is really about. The European narrative is that the Europeans undertook global conquest and colonization to bring the benefits of their advanced civilization. And Cecil Rhodes, the famous Rhodes scholarship says that we are the finest race in the world. And the more we uh, inhabit, the better for the human race. And destroying the inferior races is even good for humanity. So here is a picture of the statue of Rhodes being taken down in, in uh, South Africa and now some understanding is being developed even in the West. So I think they are taking it down in Oxford University as well. Uh, but the battle is going on. So the counter narrative is very simple. Basically Europeans say that uh, they were civilized but the truth is that they were savages and barbarians and they destroyed civilizations all over the globe. And there's a very nice quote from Mahatma Gandhi. What do I think of Western civilization? Yes, it would be a very good idea if they became civilized. Now just think about what would a world ruled by barbarians look like? You see, children uh, of barbarians would be trained to enjoy killing and watch bloodshed. But you know, uh, today children play these video games and they are trained to shoot others in um, and then when they shoot the, the picture shows the blood coming out and the person falling down and the children learn to laugh and enjoy at this thing. And so the basic philosophy is that we live in a dog eat dog world. Uh, you have to seize the moment, get enjoy your pleasure, don't worry about society, don't worry about uh, anyone else, just take your pleasure. So. The ethics is that all is fair in pursuit of pleasure and power and profits. This is a cutthroat competition. If I get the chance, I will cut your throat. If you get the chance, you cut my throat. And the society is built on individualism and hedonism and greed. And the goal of life is to maximize pleasure. So the barbarian philosophy and training is that the pursuit of wealth overrides anything. The, if a person is dying and the shopkeeper has the medicine, he can say, okay, give me a hundred dollars and I will give you this medicine. Take away everything. Take advantage of this. There is no social responsibility. It's not that if somebody is in difficulty, then all of us have the responsibility to help us, to help others. Uh, how fast the culture has changed, let me tell you, in Pakistan, probably it's the same in Indonesia, that when I was growing up, if somebody who was a training to be a doctor would say that, you know, I'm actually learning medicine so that I can make a lot of money, that would be considered very, very bad. We would say that he's a very bad man to think in this way. 
but today if a medical student says that i am learning medicine in order to serve humanity people will laugh they will say oh he is he is naive and he is uh, trying to fool us so this is so much the world has changed that making money is now the right thing to do and trying to help other people and have social responsibility and and provide service this is a bad thing to do so basically how can there be ethics in such a world there isn't the business ethics was created by milton friedman he said that the only business of business is to make profits they should not try to be socially responsible and this created a massively bad image for corporation so today we have this movement of corporate social responsibility this is created as a counter strategy the and and it's explicitly written that if we improve our image we will make more profits so you do a good deed not because to serve humanity but because to improve your image to make more profit and what this means is that you spend a thousand dollar to help a widow or an artist and then you spend ten thousand dollars to advertise it because the goal is not to help but to make publicity <clears throat> so there is a quote from Shoshana Zuboff who was a Harvard MBA professor and she said that what we have taught has caused a lot of damage and suffering the islamic alternative is to provide service to humanity and um, basically west teaches us that you provide service in order to make money islam teaches us that we make profits in order to provide service we have to make profits so that we can feed and clothe ourselves and our employees and give them a good life so that they will enjoy providing service and providing service is one of the best of the deeds for the sake of the love of allah so uh, this is basically the end how do we go, where do we go from here uh, there are various talks that i have linked an islamic economic system is built on generosity on uh, cooperation instead of competition on social responsibility taking care of each other these are diametrically opposite to the principles of the west and we are trying to build an islamic system on a on a society which is trained to be competitive individualistic to selfish greedy this is all written in the books of economics so this cannot be done we have to change our ways of thinking we have to decolonize our minds then we can build an islamic economic system and the root of the problem is western social science uh, <clears throat> which basically takes the european ideals and says that this is science everyone must be like this so we have to reject the all of the western social science because it's all this built on study of european society which was like this but european society is not the same as islamic society so when we say social science for europe that's fine they can study their own society but when we want to develop islamic social science then we have to base it on the fiqh of islam the fiqh of islam teaches us how to run society there is an islamic alternative which i am trying to develop and this is of course a task for thousands of scholars not one person but the basic idea is to build on the foundations provided by ibn khaldun and of course there is the ghazali project which we all know about and this is built on three pillars first is having faith in islam faith in allah taala faith in the message that this provides guidance for all times and then it's built on courage the courage to re reject the western gods gods to see through the deceptions of western knowledge and of their wrong philosophy of life and then it's built on creativity use the message of allah taala to create new ways of thinking to rebuild the stock of human knowledge on the solid foundations of the quran and the sunnah and so there is a lot of recommendations in this post but the first place to build is by our own personal self and there is a 10 minute video learn who you are today we have to recognize our own identity as a human being as a as uh, allah taala describes 
One human life is worth the whole planet. So we have to learn that we are very precious in the eyes of Allah. Allah Ta'ala wants to buy our lives and our wealth in return for the Jannah. So instead of selling our life in the labor market, we should learn how to sell our life to God. And uh, may Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq to do that. And so this is the end of my lecture.